Welcome back to another Beginner Deck Tech. This is a series where I make budget commander decks for brand new players, or really just for anyone who likes a more simple commander experience. The strategies of these decks are very straightforward, and the cards in them are picked for being limited on text and very easy to understand. There's a link to the full deck list on Moxfield in the description, and Moxfield also gives you some easy options to buy the full deck if you want to. So today we've got Galta Primal Hunger, a 12-12 Trampler for whoppin' 12 mana. But this spell costs X less to cast, where X is the total power of creatures you control. This means that sometimes we can get them down to just two green to cast. The game plan here is simple. We put out a lot of creatures, a lot of creatures with generally high power. We get Galta out fairly early in the game and we attack our opponents and that's pretty much it. We're trying to knock our opponent's life total to zero, but also because Galta is a very impressive 12 power creature, sometimes we can commander damage our opponents out. If you're not familiar with the commander damage rule, it says a player that's been dealt 21 or more combat damage by the same commander over the course of the game loses the game. It doesn't matter if they have a million life at that point. If Galta's dealt at least 21 combat damage to that player, they just lose. All right, let's talk about the other 99 cards in the deck. First of all, we've got 10 ramp cards, eight of which are creatures. Ramp is anything that gets you ahead on mana, and if you can get ahead on mana, then you can cast bigger spells quicker. An ideal hand would have you ramp on turn one and turn two. Then by turn three, you'd have enough mana to cast something big. Let's take a look at some of the big creatures we can cast in this deck. A lot of these creatures have Trample. Trample is an ability that lets it deal excess combat damage to the depending player or planeswalker when attacking. For example, if you're attacking your opponent with Soul of the Harvest and they block with a 2-2, 2 damage would be enough to kill the 2-2, and the excess 4 damage is dealt to the opponent. Aggressive Mammoth gives all your creatures Trample. Terra Stomper can't be countered, which means that counter spells don't work on it. Garruk's Horde lets you play with the top card of your library revealed, and you can cast creatures off the top of your library. To be clear, you do still have to pay the mana costs. Moldgraft Monstrosity says when it dies, exile it, then return two creature cards at random from your graveyard to the battlefield. You don't have to pay their mana costs on this one, you just get them back straight from the graveyard. Creeper Hulk says you can pay one in a green until end of turn, target creature you control has base power and toughness 5-5 five, five and gains trample. This allows you to turn those little mana-producing creatures into something that's good for attacking or blocking until end of turn. Verderous Gear Hulk says when it enters the battlefield, distribute four plus one plus one counters among any number of target creatures you control. So he can just put them on himself and he's an 8-8 trampler for five mana, which is great. Or you can permanently beef up one of those mana producers. Or on Galta if you're trying to get a commander damage win. Or spread it around because it doesn't all have to be on one creature. One of the other main keywords in this deck is regenerate. If a creature with regenerate is going to die in either combat or from a destroy effect or like a damage based spell, before the creature dies, you can pay the cost to regenerate it. Instead of dying, your creature is tapped and you remove all damage from it. There are a few things regenerate cannot save your creature from. It cannot save it from being exiled or from having its toughness minus to zero. There's a handful of other cards with regenerate, but my favorite is Village Elder. By paying a green, tapping it, and sacrificing a forest, you can regenerate target creature. This can save Galta, this can save anything you need to, if you're willing to sacrifice a forest at least. Some other neat little creatures in the deck, Suspicious Bookcase, can make a target creature unblockable. It can be especially good for trying to get commander damage in. Just make sure you activate this before blockers are declared. If they already blocked, it's too late. Serac, the Hunt Caller, can give target creature haste, which means it can attack the turn it comes out. That's especially good for getting Galta attacking as soon as possible. Tree Shaker Chimera says all creatures able to block it do so, and when it dies, draw three cards. This means that if a bunch of your creatures are attacking one player, they can't block the rest of the creatures. All of their creatures are busy blocking the Chimera. And the card draw is awesome too. Let's go over the rest of the card draw in the deck. In Commander, card draw and ramp are really the two most important foundational things that each deck needs. And like the rest of the deck, I've kept it as simple as possible. 
My favorite card draw in the deck is Elemental Bond, Garouk's Uprising, and Garouk's Pack Leader. All of these trigger a draw when a creature with big enough power comes into play. If you can get these down early enough, these can supply you with a constant stream of cards. Alright, now removal is the third foundational thing that each commander deck needs. We need to be able to take out key cards that your opponents control, especially creatures. Unfortunately, green is the worst color at doing this. We've got some options for destroying artifacts and enchantments, green is pretty good at that. And Desert Twister can destroy any target permanent, that includes creatures. Then we've got some spells that are sometimes referred to as bite cards, probably because of bite down. Target creature you control deals damage equal to its power to target creature or planeswalker you don't control. Then a few cards that are very, very similar to that. Since we have a lot of high power creatures in this deck, a lot of times we can kill what we need to with this, but not always. In magic, every color is bad at something, and in green, it's bad at killing creatures. This is just the best we've got. We've also got Territorial Allosaurus. It's a 5-5 for 4 mana, but you may pay an additional 3 mana as you cast it. If you do, when it enters the battlefield, it fights another target creature. Fight means that the Allosaurus deals its power to target creature, and that creature deals its power to the Allosaurus. So it's kind of like those bite spells, except your opponent's creature bites back. Azuri's Predation is the only board wipe we have in the deck. For each creature your opponents control, create a 4-4 green Phyrexian Beast creature token. Each of those tokens fights a different one of those creatures. This probably won't take out everything your opponents control, but it can take out the small and a lot of the medium-sized stuff. It doesn't take out anything of yours, and it leaves you with a bunch of beasts, too. Very good. The next section of the deck is cards that make your creatures bigger. Sylvan Anthem gives green creatures you control plus one plus one, and whenever a green creature enters the battlefield under your control, scry one. Now scry one means you look at the top card of your library. You can choose to put it back on top or on the bottom of your library. This one is an enchantment, so it stays out on the battlefield for the rest of the game, as long as it doesn't get destroyed. Blanchwood Armor is also an enchantment, but this one's an aura. You cast it targeting a creature and it enchants that creature. Enchanted creature gets plus one plus one for each forest you control. These next few just last until end of turn. Primal Bellow says target creature gets plus one plus one until end of turn for each forest you control. Since this is an instant, you can surprise your opponents with this. You can cast this after they've already blocked, or if they've chosen not to block, you can cast this and pump your creature way up. Same with Return of the Wild Speaker. Choose one, draw cards equal to the greatest power among non-human creatures you control. Non-human creatures you control get plus three plus three until end of turn. This can pump your whole team. Or if Galta's out, heck, you could just draw like 12 cards if you'd rather do that. And Overwhelming Stampede. Until end of turn, creatures you control gain Trample and get plus X plus X, where X is the greatest power among creatures you control. As our deck is focused on high power, this could get crazy. Keep in mind that this one is a sorcery, so you have to cast it before you attack. These last two are awesome for closing out the game, and it's especially nice that we can turn those small mana creatures into really formidable game-ending creatures. There's a handful of other cards that I didn't discuss, mostly just simple creatures that don't require any explanation. If you'd like to, though, you can check out the full deck list, link in the description. If you're interested, I have a couple more of these beginner deck techs. Ural the Mist Stalker focuses on making one really big creature and winning with commander damage. And Braid's Conjurer Adept tries to cheat in enormous powerful creatures without paying their mana costs. You can check those out if you're interested, and I'll see you there.